Hello to you, fellow being. Infinite Spiral here, and we're back again in Kerbal Space Program. So, in our previous episode, all we really managed to do was escape the uh, influence of Kerbin and get a mission completed for... It said it was to study the sun, but we didn't go anywhere near the sun. We just escaped the Kerbin influence and then went right back to it and landed safely. So, we got a little bit of money back from that, and with the money that we had, we... I went and upgraded this uh, VAB, so now that is fully upgraded and good to go. I uh, see. Yeah, I, I messed around with uh, the strategies and realized those aren't that great of a thing. I think what they really are is none of them are really long-term strategies. If you go to the uh, you know upper percentages and commitment. So they're they're useful for short term things, and I guess you just cancel them. It doesn't seem like there's any penalty for that. So yeah, I think they probably are useful. Like if you do it for one mission and then cancel it, just if if you're you know in need of any one particular resource more than any other. But that seems to be more what they're for. So like I said, we upgraded our uh, VAB. So now we can have maximum unlimited parts on our ships, and that is lovely and fantastic. And I have gone ahead and accepted a whole bunch of missions, um, contracts. We're not going to be doing all of these, obviously. Um, what we are going to do today is head over to Ike. So we've got two contracts that will be completed by that. We'll get a flyby on Duna, and we'll get this Explore Ike contract completed. And those two together should give a very decent payout. We'll get some good funds from that, as well as the science that we take on Ike, because we will absolutely be doing that. And in order to do that, we're going to need a brand new ship. So, you know what time it is. Alright, so this is the Icalicious Lander. This thing is supposed to take us all the way out to Duna and Ike, and <laughs> hopefully return. I don't necessarily know that it's going to be capable of that trip, but that is our aim. So I have basically modified um, the double Min Mooner Doomer again. I doubled the uh, liquid fuel in the launch stage. I modified the... I, I, switched out the central engine for it was the not the mainsail what is it the skipper yeah we switched from the skipper to the poodle so this one it has a much lower thrust and a much higher um isp which is specific impulse which is fuel efficiency in vacuum so that will give us you know a, a much more effective or efficient uh, fuel usage on that central uh, liquid fuel column in addition to that, I have added an asparagus staging to the top stage, the lander itself. So now instead of just one central thing that will get us, you know, back from the moon or Minmus, now hopefully this will get us, you know, down onto Ike and back to Kerbin. I don't know that it's going to be capable of the task. I really, really hope that it will. And, you know, the asparagus staging is especially important in that because... <laughs> We gonna we need this we need this to be as efficient as possible, but we have added lander legs on all of these just in case, because I don't know necessarily, you know, how many of these are gonna be gone by the time we land. So basically every stage of dropping these uh, fuel tanks from the asparagus staging needs to still be capable of landing, so that's kind of what I'm hoping for. <laughs> so this will be very interesting. I've also added um a second cockpit because in order to get the oh, damn it! <laughs> in order to get the most out of this, I want to bring a scientist along so that we can repack our experiments as we go along and take multiples, just for the maximum science benefit. So let's get this thing crewed up correctly. We got Jeb as our pilot. 
Perhaps we should take Val? Yes, I think we'll take Val. And as our scientist, we could go with Kimline or Tiikaka. I think we'll take Tiikaka, just for the extra percentage from her level one status. So with that done, oh, <laughs> and one last thing, you'll notice I'm way high up. I just wanted to, you know, get a little bit of extra height from the ground Kerbal style. <laughs> Any added efficiency is still added efficiency at whatever means or cost. So, anyway, let's get to it, shall we? Boy, that is precarious. <laughs> oh, anyway, look at launching! So, I have uh, messed around with my mods a little bit more. Um, I've added the KSPRC, the uh, Kerbal Space Program. Recon or not reconnaissance, Renaissance pack, or, re or Renaissance, uh, I, I don't remember what the C stands for. Oh, well, it's, uh, it's a sort of all-inclusive pack. I, I didn't take everything from it, but it sort of fixes the texture problem we were having from the previous one, because, like I said previously, um, the, the textures on the planets and everything, they looked really nice from space, but when you got down to the planet, they looked kind of crappy. So that shouldn't be a problem anymore now that I've uh, fixed that. And I'm also now running in a sort of community... Uh, <laughs> community suggested sort of 64-bit mode. So I, I'm running in Windows 64-bit, even though that's not built into the game anymore. There's sort of a community workaround, that's what I was looking for. And it's interesting it doesn't seem to have any real uh, problems no bugs but it does make these guys have very slow animation in these pictures okay safely detached that's uh, the most precarious part right there when we're detaching those and yeah we're still pretty low can't really start our gravity turn just yet but yeah, the uh, atmosphere is now different because of the KSPRC as well, and I really like it. It looks super duper nice. But yeah, this is the only thing that I don't like is the uh, slow animation here, but eh, what can you do? I'm sure there's some kind of workaround, but I haven't found it yet. If you know how to fix that, uh, let me know, because that would be super cool. <laughs> Anyway, we're just going to go ahead and fast forward till the successful orbit and the setting up of our maneuver to intersect and uh, get to Duna, or Ike, or both. Really, just Ike. Anyway, see you there. I love how this planet looks now. That is fucking beautiful. This is why we use mods. Anyway. <laughs> Alright, so we have established a nice and circular orbit at roughly 300 kilometers. This is another uh, new addition with this pack. We get auroras now, so that's that's nice and pretty. I mean, it looks a little boring right now, but if you time warp, it looks a lot better. It actually moves around and such. And we have a nice new skybox. That's one of the biggest improvements. I mean, obviously the planet looks fantastic, but... Um, the, the skybox was a major addition for me because the old one was sort of, you know, low res, a little drab. This one looks beautiful. Just marvel at that galaxy for hours. But what we are here to do is head out to Duna, or rather to Ike. So the way that you do that with uh, in interplanetary missions... <laughs> Um, you get a little bit of experience with that when you're try trying to transfer between moons, because it's, it's a similar sort of process. You know, I was relatively new to it when I was going from Minmus back to the moon. But the way that it works is you need to actually look at where you're trying to get to in, re in relation to the sun, because that's what you're going to be orbiting around once you escape Kerbin. And so, regardless of where you're pushing your orbit out from Kerbin, what you're really worrying about is where you're pushing it out in relation to the sun. So we need to burn prograde, Kerbin prograde, in order to push it out. If we wanted to bring it in, we would need to burn Kerbin retrograde, which in our case, 
curve in prograde would mean burning from this side of the planet because our orbit is going in that direction. So we would want to start our burn right there and push it way, way out and then come zoom out to this screen so we can see what we're doing. Now we're going to set Duna as the target. Well, actually, can I get to Ike and set that as a target? Because I think that would be a better approach. Yes, we can. Set Ike as the target. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, let's let's instead set Duna as the target. If we can anymore, because... There we go. Duna as target. That'll just make it easier for this intercept screen. But let's focus back over here and mess with our maneuver. So when we push it out to Duna's orbit, like so, oh, psh, beautiful. <laughs> I was worried we were gonna have to do some time warping and stuff, but apparently we're just in the right alignment right where we are. So it, we actually get it right there. We've got a periapsis at 35 uh, megameters, <laughs> megometers, uh, 35,000 kilometers. But that's a little further than what we would like. So, we're going to push it out even more. Nope, that's the wrong way. Okay, so we'll, we'll futz about with it just to try and get it as close as possible. 44, yeah. <laughs> and it might be a problem with inclination. No, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, so you, you eventually reach a point where prograde and retrograde aren't enough. So this is the closest we can get with just prograde and retrograde. So now we need to start worrying about radial in and radial out, and in this case it is radial in. So that brings us to 16,000 kilometers about, and then after that it becomes a question of normal and anti-normal. So by messing with the three different sets of uh, maneuver, I don't know what these would be called, um, handles, I guess, <laughs> you can get closer and closer to what you're aiming for. And it looks like 13 million is about as good as we can get. So we'll leave it right there and take a look at Duna and see what we're getting. So from there, we can actually get an even better look at how to maneuver it. So that, nope. Okay, so that brings it down to 3 million meters. <laughs> and that is sort of a, a polar approach. But I think that might just be okay. Nope, too much. Oh, come back. <laughs> That's super duper close. <laughs> okay, and from there, now we will set Ike as the target and see if we can get an even better approach. Okay, so you, you basically see what I'm doing though. I, I screwed up my maneuver node, so I'm gonna have to start over, but I will get back to you when I've got the closest I can get. All right, so what we have now is an Ike encounter all set up. It's going to be in front of us, so we're going to basically get to this point and then just go for a Duna orbit and then alter our orbit from there to rendezvous with Ike. But that's only a minute and ten second burn, which should be no problem whatsoever. And actually it's going to get a lot longer once I drop these uh, outer fuel these outer engines because this one is much less thrust but it's also much more efficient so yeah it'll be a much longer burn than that so we'll start sooner because I don't think these are gonna last for that minute and ten seconds but what we need to do now is uh, focus on Kerbin <laughs> so we can see what's happening and get ourselves over to this maneuver okay so right now that would be a more than five minute burn. I don't think it'll be quite that long. We'll push it up. We'll we'll treat it as though it's going to be a two and a half minute burn, I think. So we'll, yeah, we'll start a burn at a minute 15. T minus 115. And we're getting close, so let's get pointed at that maneuver, shall we? Seems like that might be a smart thing to do. 
How's our electricity? I haven't uh, deployed the solar panels, but they're just fine. Or the electricity is just fine, rather. Okay, get... Come on. You can do it. Well, we're not quite burning at uh, 115 like I wanted to, but pretty close. <laughs> there we go. Oh, we have maneuver hold. I forgot we were using Val. That's that's just great. See, I'm using the hold things. I remember. <laughs> but this, uh, oh, I think we just ran out. Yep. Okay, drop those off. This is the weird thing about using the uh, the hold buttons is <laughs> the, it's just making constant adjustments to stay pointed at it, and so you get this just shaky, shaky gimbal. But I think you don't lose any um, important... Oh, I was way off on that count. It was not going to be a two and a half minute burn. It's going to be a more than three minute burn. What is it if we just stabilize? Okay, it's about a four minute burn. I'm going to watch this and actually see if it matters. If there's any real difference between the uh, rate of... Delta V change when in a maneuver hold or a stability assist. So there's that. Yeah, yeah it doesn't seem to have any appreciable effect. Hard to really say without a stopwatch and you know pen and paper and such. But anyway, yeah, this maneuver is not going to be perfectly accurate. I estimated a little bit wrong, but. I think it'll still, it'll still be okay. We have lots and lots of time to adjust as needed. Because it's going to be quite a while before we get out there. Days and days. Alright, we are now on a Kerbin escape trajectory and just pushing out our overall solar or Kerbolar orbit. And I'm pretty sure that this is going to be another two-part episode because these missions just keep getting longer and longer and I'm sure you understand it's a <laughs> it's a very time-consuming game anyway I'll see you again when we get to our or at least close to the completion of this maneuver <laughs> all right well we completed the maneuver and we do not have an interaction with Duna or Ike so we are going to have to fudge with it a bit. So let's just get a look at what's happening here. And see what we can do. Okay, apparently we burned just a little bit too far. Alright, so I will adjust for that and meet up with you as we get close to Duna and Ike. Alright, here we go in maximum time warp. As days fly by, years before we get back to Kerbin, if we, assuming we get back at all. But we should, well no, I was going to say we should be able to see Duna soon, but that's probably not actually the case. <laughs> Visibility is sort of difficult in deep space. So the sun is there, it does this kind of crazy thing during massive time warp that I don't fully understand, just part of one of the mods. And yeah, no telling where Duna is amidst that blackness. Where are we at? Coming close. So we should see it show up sometime very soon. I think we're looking in the right direction. Oh, where are you, Duna? There you are. Oh my goodness. Okay. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, this is not nearly as close of an approach as I was going for with that initial maneuver, but ew, not even remotely close. Holy crap. So we're almost at our encounter, and our periapsis is very, very high, but we should be able to at least get a super high orbit out of it. So let's just get to it. Uh, hello. Don't act funky, time warp. Don't mess with me, please. Frightens me. Get into our interaction. Okay. So now we need to be burning retrograde. 
to get that orbit. No, not prograde, retrograde. Hold on a second. Yeah, that's doing a periapsis, okay. Just seems weird. What's it gonna take to get an orbit? Yeah, I do, that's what I thought. This is acting very funny. There we go. Okay, I was I was making my maneuver on this line instead of this one. You gotta pay attention to that. There we go. That's what we're looking for. And Ike is still our target, so we are going to be in a reverse orbit, apparently. <laughs> that is not good. But once we get our orbit established, we can very easily fix that because we're super duper far from it and it's not going to take much of an adjustment to reverse that orbit. That is a ugh, 3 minute 44 second burn. My goodness. Yeah, that was this is a very ugly approach. We could have done so much better by getting more accurate with our, our first burn from Kerbin. But we got to work with what we have. So I think yeah, I'm going to spend some time messing with our <laughs> maneuver node just to get as small of a burn and as effective of a maneuver as we can get. So I will rejoin you when I have, you know, fussed with it considerably and tried to perfect it. Sound good? Okay. All right, looks like a 4 minute 13 second burn is the best that we can do. And on our previous burn, it was what, two minutes or something like that, and we went through half of our fuel, so this is not pretty. Not pretty at all. I mean, once this drops off, it will be a lot lighter weight, and so we'll also be using a lot more engines, and I don't know. We'll see how this goes, but we're going to go ahead and get to T minus, uh, yeah, <laughs> your guess is as good as mine. Like, you could do the math to actually get an effective guess at it, and it wouldn't even be a guess, because you've will have done the math and it would be accurate because you can do that with this game but I play it like a video game so I'm just gonna do that just start my burn at the exact countdown time or at least close to it because I don't know if these are gonna end up having more thrust or less thrust than this but I get the feeling they're gonna be less I don't know <laughs> either way I'm just going to keep on burning and rejoin you when this stage ends. Because that's when things will be more interesting. Oh crap. Maybe this stage does have enough fuel to just finish the, uh, the orbit because we're halfway through our maneuver and halfway through the fuel that we had. A little more than halfway, so it's going to be close. Closer than I thought. Which is a good thing. Anyway, getting back to it. Well, okay. There goes that stage. And yeah, these do have more thrust for sure. And there's our orbit. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Now, um, let us, I think I'm going to adjust inclination on this orbit because that'll be the most efficient while we're still super duper far from everything. Yeah, 79 meters per second orbit. <laughs> Ridiculous, but let's just get rid of this. Okay. So yeah, we basically need to reverse our orbit entirely. Never mind, continuing our retrograde burn. <laughs> and turning it into a prograde burn. Oh, look at that, we've got... Oh, never mind. No, yes. <laughs> no, yes, no. Yes, no. We have Ike Periapsis here. And it's, you know, super ugly. It occurs to me now that the, the really the effective way to do this mission would have been to actually go for a Duna uh, arrow breaking maneuver because Duna has an atmosphere and that would have worked way more efficiently and wasted far, far less fuel. 
but we didn't think that far ahead. So <laughs> we're just going to work with what we've got. But I think let's just see what kind of cost this is going to have to get into an Ike orbit. 25 second burn, that's not bad. That is definitely doable, even if it is ridiculous and polar. High inclination, and also somewhat eccentric. Yay for learning the difference between terms, but... I guess we'll just go ahead and warp to that. <laughs> God, what a ridiculous looking trajectory we have. Because, yeah, basically what we did with uh, the maneuver that we ended up using is we, you know, got out to Duna's orbit and then we proceeded to establish the full orbit of Duna. We actually pushed our full trajectory out so it wasn't even intersecting with Kerbin's anymore. It was fully on a, a, a Duna path, which it is still, roughly. And, yeah, that's that's massively inefficient. Very, very wasteful. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and do this maneuver. I don't trust that. Oh, I'm going to manually time warp. Also, I'm going to quick save right here. <laughs> before things go disastrously wrong. Also, before I burn through all my electricity since I'm leaving SAS engaged, I'm going to finally engage my solar panels. I just left those things stowed for the entire trip. I mean, it was fine because the, uh, the engine that we had on the previous stage was actually charging them. These ones don't charge electricity, though. But there, that's nice. And we can go ahead and uh, turn a bit more towards the sun. Yes, very nice. Okay, anyway, back to the time warp. All right, here we are in our Ike encounter. Where are you, Ike? There you are, right down there. So we're going to go ahead and start burning retrograde right now. Just drop that. Don't need the maneuver node. And get back to the map screen to keep an eye on things. Also, how's the fuel? Not too terrible. We will be running out of one stage of these very soon, which makes me a little nervous, but... That's just how it goes. So that's what happens when you don't wait till the periapsis to make your retro burn. <laughs> Strange things. Alright, well... That's okay, we're just gonna... Mm. Set Ike as target. Hey, set Ike as target. Okay, don't... See if I care. Just, just don't. <laughs> We're going to time warp to periapsis and get a proper orbit. There, that didn't take much. Okay, and I'm not going to worry about fixing inclination or anything because we're just going to land. So, let's just go ahead and do that. I don't know that we're going to get back to Kerbin because I really thought that uh, previous fuel stage would last a lot longer. Where's... there you are. God. <laughs> Space is too big. It's easy to lose track of things, but change that to surface. Yeah, that's a really handy feature, um, clicking this to change which velocity you're measuring, because we want surface velocity for landing. And once that gets down to almost zero, or at least as close to it as we can get, basically once it stops falling and starts rising, that's when we cut engines. So that's when we've killed off all lateral velocity and are just falling towards the planet like so and let us just finagle our way to a strictly vertical fall there we go close to all right time to start falling towards the moon which is Ike Ike the moon of Duna Duna's moon Dear Lord, <laughs> don't time warp too much. Alright. Probably should have quick saved again. Don't know why I'm acting like I can't still, because I absolutely can. I 
just want to kill off the lateral motion. And I actually, I don't want to quick save here because there's a good chance that we've already passed the point of... Uh, oh, also, we need to drop those. There we go. So those will crash somewhat close to our landing site. <laughs> But they'll also give us a good uh, idea of where the ground is. Eh, we still got a ways to go. There it is. Okay. Well, maybe not quite as far as I thought. Get our lights on, get our gears engaged. Man. Those just barely don't clip. Anyway, we should be burning. <laughs> so those lights are going to appear very soon. Yes? Do I have lights? I don't have lights. Jeez. I forgot to put lights on the bottom of this thing. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Glad I noticed before hitting the ground. Seems like Ike might actually be a little bit uh, more massive than the moon. Gravity seems a bit stronger. Okay. Good. Let's uh, kill SAS. There we go. And bring it back up. There! Nice! We're on Ike. I'm probably not getting back to Kerbin. <laughs> oh no. And we also didn't take any science from space around Ike. Like fools. My word. Oh, I really want to revert back to launch and start this whole damn thing over because we screwed this thing from the start. But we're here. We work with what we're given. With what we foolishly established from the start. One of the samples has reacted very strangely to the surface of Ike. Hmm. I wish you could be more specific. Open up that survey as bay. And I believe we're going to go ahead and conclude the episode right here while taking all of this science. The attempt at a return trip will be our next episode. And, oh god, it's terrifying. <laughs> But if you enjoyed what you saw here, go ahead and leave a like. And if you'd like to see more, go ahead and subscribe. And we will see you in the next episode. See you there.